everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another live class. I am so excited for this one. Um, I love painting animals. I don't know about you. So this one has been on a high priority for me. Um, as I was picking classes, I was like, yes, let's do this one. Um, a question I get asked um, all the time is, can you come back to this video if you're watching it live? Yes, always. Um, all of my live free classes are um, all available on my YouTube channel. Um, so make sure you subscribe um, so you can find me later. I have all of my classes in different playlists, so they're easy, easy, easily be, bleh, more easily accessible. There we go. Um, and so, yeah, if you want to come back to it later, that is totally fine. Um, and then you can paint it with us when it's very convenient for you, okay? Um, so I have a couple things here I just want to go over. We're going to go over supplies real quick. And then I have a couple announcements, just um, some of last week classes, new classes, um, and Patreon classes. So stick around for that and then we will get straight to painting, okay? Um, the first thing we're gonna go over is my traceable. That is available in my Patreon. Uh, it is $5 to join the lowest tier in order to get access to the traceables. You do not need a traceable in order to do the class. So if you're not a patron and you don't wanna have the traceable, that's totally fine. You can go ahead and draw it yourself. I've already transferred this to my canvas. Um, so if you, uh, want to do that now feel free um, I'm not going to go in depth on how to uh, draw this because it is an animals tend to take a little bit more time um, to do this but um, essentially you just have the basic figure out where that you want the base of your bird um, and then you can kind of just draw in all the details from there okay um, I have about, I have an 11 by 14 canvas, just a standard canvas um, from Michaels. So I have about a two inch gap from here in the top. Um, so just figure out where you want it placed um, and then you can um, go from there. And if you have a parrot bird at home that you wanna paint, um, feel free to incorporate that too, okay? Um, so this is available in my Patreon. Uh, there's links uh, in the description. There's links in the live chat. I'll put a, a little um, thing above at, at the end of the class so you can find it easily. Um, but yeah, that's also just a way to support me as an artist because I do do these classes for free weekly. Um, so it's to help that. And you'll also get access to not, not only all the rest of the traceables for this month, but every past traceable as well. So you can have access to all of those for just $5. So yeah, that is uh, that's that. So um, traceable, I have an 11 by 14 canvas, but feel free to use whatever canvas you have. It doesn't need to be a, um, 11 by 14. Um, in my Patreon, the traceables, I have an 11 by 14 size and a 9 by 12 size, but if you're a patron and you want a different size um, for maybe a smaller canvas or even a bigger canvas, just let me know and I can resize it for you um, and I can post it on that as well, okay? So yeah. Uh, colors, let's go over colors real fast. Colors, I'm just gonna have my standard black and white and don't be fooled by the bottles. These are full body acrylics. They are not the craft acrylics that you can like pour out. They're full body, these are from Hippie Crafter. Um, they are super nice and send me stuff that I can use and I love their stuff. So if you are looking for uh, a like a kit, of acrylic paints. Um, they have a very nice variety and it comes in a kit and it's really nice. 
Uh, so yeah, I've been using these for like a year and a half, two years probably, um, and they're just really nice. So I have uh, black and white, and then the colors, this all depends on what color of parrot you're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do this green, blue, and yellow one. So I have, um, I have a phthalo blue. I do have a master's touch blue. So it's a little bit more of like a bright blue in there. Um, and then I have a green, a yellow, and a brown. And with these colors, uh, specifically the brown, green, and yellow, and blue, you can kind of create whatever green you need. Um, I like to have this bright green on hand because I can get a bright green and then I can also tone it down to add in those, um, the browns and the blues to make it more um, darker or the the yellow and white to make it more um, bright and vibrant. So um, I, I like to have a lighter green to so I can kind of really tone down what color of green I want. If you have other greens that you want to use, you do not have to use the same ones as me. Use what you have, use what you like, use your favorites, um, and just have fun, okay? Um, for my brushes, I have standard brushes that I like to use. I will use a large filbert for my background, and then I typically will have three others on hand for like any given class, which is my small filbert, a medium to small round brush, and then a liner brush. I like to have liner brushes on hand because they're really nice in getting small, thin strokes. I don't know how much detail we're gonna be doing on this one specifically. Um, so I might not use all these, but I like to have these on hand. And obviously I have a bunch of, you know, on hand um, in like off the screen. So if I need to grab that, I can. Um, but these are the four that I typically will use in almost every single class. Um, other things that you'll wanna have for this class, is you don't have to have it, um, but these are going to be a fun thing. If you look at the, um, if you look at the, the yellow feathers, something I was thinking about as I was preparing for this class, I'm like, this is going to be a really fun part of this class. And I'm really excited for it is using a fan brush to get those, like those parts of the, um, of those feathers. And I'm like really excited for it. So if you have a fan brush, um, this is a hog bristle uh, fan brush, I think. Um, and this is all of the supplies that I use are in the description below as well as on my Amazon shop. So if you want to use exactly what I use, feel free to go over there um, and you can get whatever you need before you even start class. Um, yeah, these are super handy. I use them in a lot of my classes. Other things that you might want to have on hand, um, if you have them, great. If not, don't worry about it. Um, but I have over here some, let me see, where are they? Um, I have some sponge daubers. Now I really enjoy having these for bokeh effect. If you don't have these, you can still achieve a bokeh effect um, with this or without these. It's just a little bit harder and it takes a longer time. Um, and it's not as, I don't know, it's not as fun in my opinion. Um, but if you don't have these, you can still, I would just do like kind of like a blurry background. You don't need to do the bokeh. Um, you don't even need to do like a distant tree. Just do some green and white and I'm sure it will look great because we're going to focus all of our time on this bird because there's a lot of detail on this bird and I don't want to spend too much time on the background. Um, so just do what you need to do for the background. Um, if you have these, great. If you want to use them, perfect. If not, then just kind of do like a blurry background. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure what I'll do. I'm not sure if I'm going to do bokeh or not. That's why I didn't put it in the, um, in the, the, uh, not description, the title. I didn't put it in the title. I don't think, um, because I wasn't totally sure if I wanted to do it. Um, but it's there just in case. Um, okay. Other things I have a palette knife. And don't let that scare you. I just, I use my palette knife to mix colors. So if you have a flat palette, um, get yourself a palette knife because you can mix colors really easily. Um, and you don't, you don't dirty up your waters before you even start painting. It's super, super handy. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much what I'm going to be using. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, if you really want to get my attention, just at me, like at Samantha, um, Anderson artist, and it'll like pop up, um, it'll pop up orange for me and it'll grab my attention. 
Um, but other than that, I'm excited to get started. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how you paint the feathers. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. I don't. We're not gonna do too much detail because this type of thing, there's going to be, there's a lot of detail that you could do, and I could probably spend six hours plus on like just the blue feathers. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit of a mix of some detail and just kind of some fun um, technique in here. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Um, hopefully you all have your supplies. I'm going to go over just a couple paintings that we've um, completed over the last um, few weeks. This was what we painted last week. I think it came out super well. Um, honestly, I think it came out better than I was thinking it was going to come out, um, just in my own experience. Um, I really love it. The fire came out awesome. And every time I look at it, I'm just like, whoa, that looks so cool. Um, so if you want to paint fire, if you want to learn how to paint this, uh, go into my, uh, go on my channel, go paint it. Um, we did it last week, so it should be right on the top. Uh, yeah, so this one was super duper fun. In my Patreon, we, every month I would do an exclusive tutorial just for my magenta tier. Um, and everybody who's magenta and above will also get this. Um, but this is what we painted beginning of the month so if you like ballerinas or you have a ballerina in your life um, or you just like dance or you want to learn how to paint people um, this was a really fun class uh, we didn't spend too much time on the background because I really wanted to spend all the time on her and it really paid off because I love everything about her um, so that one was really fun if you want to paint that that is in my patreon for the magenta tier and above and if you're wanting to go a little bit more in depth with some paintings um, in my cobalt class we do a weekly live class and this is what we just finished yesterday so if you like big cats or cats or wildlife or animals or painting fur um this was so fun um and it's just a fun process like fur is so fun um but i think my like his chin his chin muscle area is probably my favorite and his eyes I love his eyes um, but super captivating um, if you enjoy painting uh, animals this one was a really fun one to paint but yeah that is kind of the update on recent paintings I want to paint the cat yes go paint it so that is a part of my cobalt tier um, so once a month um, we get to pick out something and we paint it all together. Um, if you want to paint that, that is in my $20 a month tier. Um, and you'll get access to all the other $20 tier, um, paintings as well. So, um, like last month we painted, uh, I think it was last month we did Yosemite and we've done, um, hydrangeas and we painted a big church, um, that was like a vintage church and that was really fun um so go if you want to see um all of the classes whether on patreon um in either tier or on my youtube go into here i'll post a link right now um go into my facebook community um let's see facebook community it's a free community on facebook and you can go into the albums and you can literally look at every single class that I've ever painted for an online class. So whether in Patreon or YouTube, um, you can go into the albums and you can, um, you can go see all those classes. Um, I just joined the $5 class, uh, the $5. Okay. Um, can I credit this for the 20? Yes. Yeah. So if you are a patron, um, if you are a patron at a lower level class, um, you can either upgrade now. And if, if you're in the $5 clear, you only have to pay the $15, like whatever's left over. If you're in the $10 um, tier, you'll only have to pay the $10 and that's for the rest of the month. So if you wanted to, you could also wait until the beginning of next month. And then you'll not only get this, this month and all the past months, but then also, um, you'll get next month's as well. So it's up to you. It is supporting me, obviously. Um, so if you want to join now and you can paint that, that's totally fine. That's great. And then you can stay for next month if you want to paint whatever we're doing next month, which 
um, sneak peek, we're painting a frog. Um, we're painting a tree frog, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, feel free to go check out all the classes and figure out. And you can stay for one month or you can stay for two or you can stay for however long. It's not like, yes, it's a membership, but it's not, um, you're not like locked in unless you pay for the year. You're not locked in. It's, it's monthly, so you can cancel whenever you want. Okay, enough about my Patreon. Um, yeah, let's get started. Hopefully you have some sort of drawing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my acrylic marker. If you do not have acrylic marker, you can just grab, um, you can grab a liner brush or a small round brush and get some black, mix it in with a little bit of paint. Um, and you can, um, you can do the same thing that I'm doing right now. I'm just going to go in just a little bit and just barely put in an outline just so that when we are doing our when we're doing our um, background if I go over this line I'm not gonna lose my sketch um, because this is black I really can just go in here and put in this a little bit more firmly the feathers I don't really want to have it very firmly because it is um, green and blue. I don't really want that. Everything that's feather, I just want, I just want a little bit of that black. I think that's enough. So you don't need a lot, just something to um, kind of designate where everything is. And then I'm actually going to do this part with a brush. I'm going to go ahead and mark in my eyes so that I, you know, I don't have to do it later. And so that this can dry. So I'm going to get a little bit of water with a round brush. I'm going to get some black. So if I didn't have an acrylic pen, I would just do that now with just like a really fine liner. Um, I'm going to fill this in. And around it as well. go into the nose part too because that's a pretty dark area like the nostril I guess it might not be a nostril maybe no, I think it is a nostril I always thought their nostrils were like on their beak this is kind of really close to their beak all right and that's pretty much that's pretty much all we need you could do this um, in black maybe we'll do like a wash so if you don't know what a wash is a wash is just a um, very watered down um, version of like putting on a layer so I'm gonna grab a lot of water and mix it in kind of with some of this black and I'm just gonna fill in this area and it's gonna be watery. It's gonna be weird. If you've never done a wash before, it's gonna be like, well, I can see like every stroke, like that's okay. It's just like getting a layer down without, um, without having to be super precise about it. I'm going to do the same thing up here. And the purpose of this is so that when we come in with our black, our kind of blackish blue color for the beak, we're not putting it on just straight white. And not only does it help the, um, the paint 
get into all the crevices. But then it's almost like you're doing a second coat already. And because it's fairly, um, it's mostly water, it's just gonna, it's gonna dry super quick. Um, it's gonna dry really fast. So let's go ahead, um, while that's kind of drying, um, let's figure out um, kind of where these other things are. Um, with this same kind of wash, I'm just gonna kind of mark in where these darker areas are. And if you haven't like drawn these parts in, um, this is kind of the chance to do this. Um, and you can kind of draw it in with your wash. Kind of, you got some, some parts here. I got barely any, anything on my brush. It's really just that wash. And it kind of comes up the top here. I don't really have lines on the face very much, so I'm just kind of, and then the rest is kind of, the rest are the other colors, so I'm not gonna worry, I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's go ahead and mix together our greens. Um, doing a wash seems similar to dirty frosting a cake. Dirty frosting, okay, dirty frosting. I've never heard that term before. I'm trying to imagine frosting a cake. It's, you do it with like a brush? So that's what I'm imagining, just like, like a dry brush and like putting on either like a powder or a, um, um, like a, a separate color to kind of just like give it texture and color without like painting it on at least that's what I'm that's what I'm imagining <laughs> um, okay so now that we've kind of done that we have a little bit of um, a direction as to where we're gonna go uh, let's go ahead and get our green out all right now all I'm thinking about is cake and how I would decorate cakes and <laughs> another life I would probably be a cake decorator not a cake baker not not a cake baker, a cake decorator. Um, why are you using a wash first, please? Um, a wash is one, uh, two reasons. One, doing a wash first not only fills in some of the canvas so that when, when we put in our other colors, um, we're not putting it on straight white. Um, it's kind of like a first coat. Um, um, and also, when I like doing washes, um, so they can kind of get an idea of where everything is without being solely committed to a color. So that's really nice. Um, and then there was another reason why I was doing it. Um, there's a bunch of reasons why you can do a wash first. Um, but I think mainly it's to uh, kind of help fill in the gaps. Um, as well as when you're working with acrylics, it is really really helpful to work in layers and the, like the more layers you do the easier it becomes um, to kind of just be able to paint um, if you if you only do one layer then you're like committed with that first layer and then it's like you have all this pressure that you can't mess up and things like that like with this first layer you put it on and it's like I know that I'm gonna come back to it so I don't have to worry about the shading or the lines or even the color um, I know it's darker um, but I don't have to worry about all these things it really is um, just a way of getting paint on the canvas without having to uh, be so worried about what it looks like in a, in a way and you're getting the general color so we're probably going to do um, maybe not a wash, but we are going to do a first coat of the yellow um, because yellow is so translucent. Um, so we're going to need a couple coats of that. And acrylic, you work, you have to work in coats and you have to work in layers. So getting that first layer on um, 
for me, it helps me visualize where the depth and where everything is, um, as well as when we're doing the background, if we go over um, this line, if we go over it, it's a lot easier to see that through the paint because it's now darker um, rather than if it was still white, it might be harder to find that line. Um, it's all it's all preference. You don't have to, um, but if you want to, that's how you do a wash. Um, okay, so I have my palette knife out here. I'm gonna grab some brown. Oh, I did. I grabbed brown. I'm gonna grab some yellow, and then I'm also gonna grab some blue. Now these are the four or five colors. Um, oh, and my white. So the colors I have on my palette are black, green, brown, yellow, blue, and white. Specifically, the, the brown is raw umber. I have medium yellow and I have phthalo blue. Phthalo blue has a little bit more of like a greenish tint rather than ultramarine as a cooler, um, less green. Um, so that's just, um, just a preference in this one. There are a lot of greens in there, so I figured that would be better. Um, we're gonna mix together some um, some dark greens, some blue greens, some yellow greens, just all kind of um, a part of the background. So let's go ahead and have some fun. I'm gonna start off with green, a couple different piles of green, and I'm gonna add different things to them. All right, I'm going to add I think this first one I'm going to do kind of more of like a bluish dark green. So I'm going to grab a little bit of brown and some blue. So now I have this kind of fairly dark green. I am going to add a tiny bit of black just to darken it even more. So again, this green has my bright green, brown, blue, and black. So it's a pretty, pretty dark green. Um, for this green, I'm going to do more of like the medium tone green. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow and a tiny bit of blue. We'll see where we, where we come out. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit more green back to it. Just to brighten it up ever so much. And if you have greens like right out of the bottle that you wanna use, that's also okay. Oh my gosh. My hand like slipped and it made it made my palette knife flip the paint up and over into my lap and it fell right on my hand. Which I'm really happy about because I forgot to put on my um my apron and I'm like wearing my favorite sweatpants. Life of an artist. It's hilarious. I can't be the only one that gets paint on me. Like, like weird things like that happen all the time where I'm just like, this, does this happen to other people? <laughs> just like literally paint flying through the air onto my lap. But not into my lap, onto my hand. Um, this is just a friendly um, uh, reminder to put on your aprons so you don't get paint on your favorite clothes. Also, don't wear your favorite clothes when you're painting. You thought you came here to paint. In reality, you came here to get advice on what not to do. Okay. 
we're back. All right, so I have a pretty good, um, pretty good medium green, I would say. So now I'm gonna mix just solely yellow with this one, maybe like the tiniest bit of brown. Give me way more yellow and a little bit more brown. The brown makes the green very earthy, especially because I the green that I have is very like not natural green, I would say. It's like very rarely do I see plants that have that type of green. All right, so I'm gonna take some of this and add the rest of this yellow and a little bit of white to it. So again, I just took some of that bright green and like my brightest green and I added the rest of my yellow and some white to it. And I think I might need even more yellow because like up here there are some pretty bright yellow. But again, I don't want to spend too much time on the background, so we're just going to add this and probably get going. And just like that, we have four colors of green that we can use for our background. Um, and pre-mixing colors like that is really, really helpful, especially if you are a beginner. Um, pre-mixing colors, I would highly recommend it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna start over on the left side okay and I'm just gonna take my big brush and dip it in my water wipe it off so it's not like dripping and I'm gonna go into my dark my dark colors first go into my, my greens and if you have um, if you have a canvas like mine, you're gonna wanna make sure to go over the side and paint the sides of the canvas too. Um, we call it wrapping the canvas to wrap the canvas. Now what's fun about a background like this is I feel like there's no real right or wrong way to do this. I'm just kind of going in circles and you want it to be, um, you want it to be kind of blurry and in the back and um, kind of just, Like if you wanted to go in detail, you could. But for the purpose of this class, we're just going to. Um, now something like this, this would have been a good thing to um, preface with a, um, a, sorry, my brain, my brain is not working tonight. Um, with a wash because green green is very very opaque or uh, is very translucent uh, 
Um, so doing a, a wash with the green probably would have been a good idea. But we're just going to go in. And how I'm adding this is I'm, I'm just going in crisscrosses. I'm making little tiny X's. And just kind of putting on more paint. Um, my lighter colors, ironically, are more opaque um, because they have white in them. So what we're going to do is I'm just kind of moving into these lighter colors. I got some of this brighter colors. And as you get over to this side, you can start working in your white. You can go in circles with this brush, um, or you can start working in your um, your sponge dauber. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna come in here with a second brush, a clean brush. And with my white, I'm going to start doing some circles. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush because I wanna come in here with um, some white and I can't do that if I have a bunch of green in my brush. I'm gonna go get this white, fill in this area. And I'm gonna fill in this whole area, all the places that are all white. It's just gonna be helpful. do the side of this. Just going to maybe do some circles of white. Can blend it in. If you want to, if you do have a sponge dauber and you would like to know how to use it, um, you can get it wet just a tiny bit. Get some white. Just turn it over, make sure that it's fairly even. You can also do this by like dabbing it and twisting it on your palette.
and you can just push and push and spin you can add some circles just like that And you can also do different colors. So if you wanted more of like a, a yellow version, you can add that as well. to go ahead and rinse out my brush or my sponge a little bit so I can go back into my white if you do rinse out your brush or rinse out your sponge um, with water make sure that you you dry it off really well because you don't want all that water um, in your you don't want all that water in your in your sponge We are going to keep moving down. Uh, so I'm gonna grab some of this darker color. I'm gonna grab the bright, brighter yellowish green. And you can always blend out with another clean brush. And this is gonna this is gonna be like dry brushing almost. I'm just using the side of the brush. It's almost like a brown in here. You can go in with um, some white if you need to. And just to make it consistent, I'm gonna go back in with my My sponge dauber. If you guys don't have sponge daubers and you like doing bokeh, like you need to get these. They are they make it so fun. And 
and really easy <laughs> to accomplish a bokeh type effect. I'm going to go into some of this color that's down here. I'm just going to continue to kind of blend that edge so that it's not harsh. And I'm going to add some darker color down here. Don't forget to wrap it around if you need to. Add that dark color. And again, if you have something like this where it's like, oh, it's, I need to blend it in, you can take another brush and just blend just that portion of it. And all of a sudden, it's, it looks way better. You can blend it up. I'm just doing little tiny movements with this brush. And if it's too dry, Rinse it out, maybe grab another color or the same color and you can go in little circles or you can bring other tools into the mix. take a clean brush and get some white because I kind of pulled this green out here and I don't really want that in here. So I'm just going to go in with that white, kind of bring it down a little bit. And I like that better. Alright, so that's pretty much the end of the of the background. You can keep adding stuff if you want, if you want more green, more light color, like whatever you need. Um, I'm going to make sure all my sides, I always forget to do my sides, so I'm going to make sure all my sides are cohesive with what's, um, with what's on the front. As well as the top, I always forget the top.
I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead, if you do use a sponge, make sure that you rinse it out um, because you don't want it to sit there the whole class and then be unusable at the end. All right, now we get to spend the rest of the class just over an hour um, on this. The first thing we are going to do um, is put on, um, I'm going to put on a small layer of white around the edges of this just so that I have a clean um, area to work with when I'm coming in with the blue. And you can start flicking up if you want to kind of create those feather like textures. This is kind of the first part of that. I'm mostly just trying to um, clean up the edge because it's got this dark green in here. And I want it to be a little bit easier to come in with that blue. And if that's there, then it won't be like, it won't have the same effect. I'm mostly focusing on um, now this is a dark area so I'm not really worried about that it's mostly just that blue um, So while that dries, um, actually I'm going to get a little bit more white in this area. Again, I'm just trying to create a um, a space where all of the where all the blue is. It's going to be the same color or close to it of that white. Um, while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and get some yellow out and do a first coat of just yellow um, because we're going to need to do a couple coats of this. So I'm just going to take this yellow it can be a little bit of a wash, like it doesn't need to be a solid color. And it comes up about right here. also going to come in here because it's a lot easier to go over yellow with um, like a black than it is for yellow to go over black. Again, it's easier for your black to go over yellow than it is for your yellow to go over black. So I'm actually going to also put in some, there's like some yellow up here actually. Sure, we'll just put that in. All right. All right, so 
So while that is drying, let's go ahead and make our um, let's go ahead and make our blue color. Um, actually, before we do that, I want to get in a first coat of white on this. Um, and this is so that when we're painting in our black, we don't want to forget that there is supposed to be white paint there. And sometimes when we're painting white, it can be hard to remember that there's not paint somewhere um, first. So let's go ahead and get that first coat of white so that we don't forget. So I'm just going to cover this whole area. in white and because we went over that first part in black we can just go straight over the eye and we can go straight over the nose if we need to and this other this other section If you have if you ever have troubles trying to figure out where you've painted and like where you haven't um, you can always just move your um, let's see that I can see that this is reflecting and this is not so I can see where I've painted and where I haven't so that's a good little trick in case um, in case you need it already I'm loving this painting. Usually you get to this stage and you're like, what is happening? This is the ugly stage. I hate this, everything about it. But the background looks so good <laughs> that it's like, I'm like, oh, we have a pair already <laughs> with that yellow popping out. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna move, I don't really need to have this on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this. Another perk of having a flat palette is I can remove pieces really, really easily and like make more space for other colors. I've been using this one for probably a few years as well um, and I'm never going back to what I used before. It's so easy to clean and it's so nice having the space. Um, I used to use a tile. I used to use a white tile. Um, it's actually sitting underneath here. And I used to use a white tile. And I, like almost every class, I would stick my hand right in the white paint because I couldn't see it. <laughs> so I'm just like, why? I need something else. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and I'm actually going to move my white back up here. I moved where my white was because there was so much green in it and it was tinting everything. So I'm just going to remove that and move my white back up here. Speaking of sticking your hand in things, you shall not. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get two different blues out. I'm going to get this um, very pretty, like bright blue color. It's, let's see, what is it? It is Lake Blue from Master's Touch, which I believe Master's Touch is Hobby Lobby brand? I think I haven't honestly I haven't had to buy paints in such a long time because hippie crafter keeps giving me stuff because they're amazing and so I haven't even had to I haven't had to buy paint they're amazing they're very nice all right all right so I have that bright blue yeah, it is Hobby Lobby. I have one other brand in here that is, um, it is uh, 
the art district and that's the what I was thinking but it says Aaron Brothers. so this is from Aaron Brothers so technically it's Michael's because Michael's owned owned Aaron Brothers as well and then they enveloped it when it kind of Aaron Brothers kind of went out of business um, so the art district is the other one that I have um, bits and pieces of around here uh, so master such as Hobby Lobby the art district is Aaron Brothers which no longer exists technically um okay so I have this bright blue I'm going to do my phalo blue and we're going to just kind of mix together some paints and oh I already had I already had that out let me just put some of this I am gonna need more than what I had out so that's fine but okay another great thing I love about these is that I get to just like if I put too much out I get to just open up the cap and put it back in whereas with those like tubes you like you can't do that you can't just put it back there is no putting it back you just waste paint you can but it's like it takes a lot longer than what just happened <laughs> okay I'm going to mix paint um let's see I'm gonna do a first coat of just this blue here this just main blue with maybe a tiny bit of um of phthalo blue in it and I'm just gonna do maybe not like a, a wash um but not like a super thick coat You do still have to be mindful about going over the yellow and like maybe I'll still go over kind of like their feathers on the edge of it. Right now I'm just trying to get into all those grooves and make sure that I have paint covering all these areas. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this back part of it, even though it's like probably closer to a dark color. If you're like me, you would have forgotten the bottom, <laughs> of course.
and I'm going to add a little bit of white to my mixture for this first coat um, up here because it is a little bit brighter. And if you want to follow the white that we did earlier, that's fine too. Um, or you don't have to. I'm just slowly flicking out my brush. But again, this is just the first part of this, so you don't have to be precise. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of this green and kind of blend that into this area. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now that I'm doing a little bit more close work. I'm going to take this green and just put it on. I'm leaving room on the very edge of it to put a brighter green. But again, we're just, this is just the first coat. This is not the final coat. This is not what it's going to look like after. This is just the first coat. We're just trying to get, we're kind of blocking in, we're just blocking in the colors. I'm going to go into this bright green that we had here before. I'm going to put that at the top. Again, we're just blocking in the base colors that we see. Those are the base colors that I see. All right, let's go ahead and do, um, let's do some of the darks. So I'm gonna go in with my black and just a tiny bit of blue. And a tiny, tiny bit of white. So this is gonna make a fairly um, dark, a fairly dark, um, like, blackish blue for the beak. I'm 
And this isn't the final color. We're still going to do probably one more um, coat for the beak, but it's nice to just get start getting that correct color on there. And what's nice about doing that kind of wash before is we're not dealing with putting this on to a white canvas. I'm just going to make sure that this line is straight. I'm going to dip my brush into a little bit of white, start adding some of those streaks a little bit, but we'll add details on the next, the next section of this. All right, let's go ahead and do the bottom one. The bottom one is just a tad bit darker. So if you want to add just a little bit more black to that section, And that would be appropriate. A little bit more black to this area. Almost like a little bit more blue right here, but we'll add that in the next portion of it. I'm going to turn this upside down. Don't stress yourself out. Like, turn your canvas. Don't feel like you need to paint one way. If it's uncomfortable for you or super awkward to paint um, a certain direction or you can't see what you're doing, just turn your canvas. It's totally, totally fine thing to do. I'm going to grab a little bit of white and put some streaks in here just to kind of start that process a little bit. pretty good. I'll add a little bit more later once it's like fully dry. All right, I'm going to rinse out my brush. I am going to fix this portion right here. Make sure.
sure that that's clean. All right. Um, let's go ahead and do, let's see, what should we do next? Let's put in some of our darks down here, figure out where we want all of our, um, our feathers. I'm gonna get some of this dark color black and just kind of put in some of these. We are gonna go over it, um, the outer corner of these with white. But starting to add some of this like depth and darkness will really start to bring this um, to life. All right, there's some darkness in here. There's some darkness up here, but I'm gonna wait until after we do the rest of this. Just like the darkness of the inside of a wing that's over here. And there's a little bit of darkness. So just with a dry brush, I'm just gonna put in some of this darkness. I have barely anything on my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of push my brush and then go up. Feathers like this are kind of a, very, very similar to fur, um, but this more of like, I like to think of it more of like clumps of fur. Um, so I'm also going to grab this same blue here and go ahead and put in some of this, these dark, um, darker blue areas of these feathers, the, the black feathers. in this area. So the base of this is very dark so that when we come over with our light color, you're going to be able to see that because without the dark, you can't have the light. You have to have that contrast. So it might seem like it's very dark right now, but trust me, you need it. Um, and I'm going to put one coat of yellow right here. All right, 
right, who's ready for some detail? All right, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work, um, essentially whenever we work, we wanna work back to front. And <coughs> that means that we're kind of working, we're gonna be working with his face first because that's like everything else is kind of over the face, like these up here um, and even the beak like the, those that um, those feathers are kind of the furthest back and then we're going to be working from bottom to top because we're going to be laying over each one of those feathers over top the one before it um, so essentially we're going to be working in just a bunch of layers as we go up hope that makes sense so we have about 40 minutes to kind of do all this detail so I hope you're having fun and I'm excited to um, detail is one of my favorite things um, but we've done all like the the groundwork for it so it should be a fairly simple process so let's go ahead I'm gonna grab a uh, one of these brushes just a um, medium round I would say I'm gonna grab some white and I'm going to just put a tiny bit of black just to make a little bit of an off gray so that I can start putting in some of these um, darker areas. All of this is still white, but there is darkness within this. It's not just all white, even though it is white and we know it is white. It has shadows within it. And I think that's where a lot of um, paintings become flat and don't have much depth to it because you have to you have to remember that even though even though I say this all the time when I'm when I'm doing clouds, um, even even if the cloud is white and we know it as white because clouds are white, um, it reflects whatever it is around it. So clouds are never, never only white. All right, so I'm doing a bit of stippling, which is just dabbing my brush on, um, on the canvas, just adding some texture. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of brown to my kind of gray mixture. Add a little bit of darkness in here, some warmth, warm darkness. I'm gonna add some darkness here on the top of this. And just anywhere where you see darkness, any sort of any sort of that nature. And now all of a sudden we can see like where the feathers are. And now that we have that, we can go back into this kind of darkish blue gray area that I have over here that we did for the beak. Um, and I'm gonna start adding little bits and pieces I'm gonna grab a little bit of water just so that this can more easily um, go onto my canvas. And then just kind of one by one, you're gonna start adding these little flicks. And they're kind of like stripes, but they're like little feathers some of them are clumped together and look more like lines. Thank you. 
we'll zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can kind of see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And then try not to make so many that you cover up the white. You don't want to cover up all the white. I'm gonna go ahead and go back in here with my I'm also going to go over the eye again. And within the eye, I can see that there is a little bit of shadow and gloss. So I'm just going to add that real fast. I'm going to go back into that gray that I've been using. And use that gray to kind of move around. It's kind of darker on the top. And then once that's dry, I'll come in with um, some white. Just adding little details as I see them. Alright, and that's about, I think, as much detail as I want to do on that. Now we get to have fun with the rest of this. I'm going to grab a medium size filbert, one that I want to do. Actually, I don't know, let's see. Mm. I'll use my large one. Never mind. I'm going to use my large filbert. 
and because I can always turn this um, as I go I'm going to create a color after I get rid of this blue because I don't want this blue anymore I'm gonna create a kind of like a medium blue and then like a light blue and then we'll we'll come back in with a darker color to really um, emphasize all the the darkness parts of it it's kind of a two-step process I would say three step first we're gonna put in we're gonna put in all of the um, the feathers with almost like a one stroke we're gonna come in put in all of the dark parts of it and then we're going to come back behind it and put in the details and actually we might need to do well we're doing the one over here first so we're doing the one over here first and then we're gonna do the yellow and then we're gonna do these um, so there's that let me do a lighter blue with my white and I'm gonna need more white than that Okay, so I've just made a lighter blue and a medium blue for this. And what we're gonna do is with just the one brush, we're gonna create a bunch of things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add this light blue and here's where I get to test that it needs to be lighter and I actually think that this is the edge of the parrot so I might come behind here and add some green right here just to signify that that's the edge of the parrot. I'm gonna grab some black And just because I still have black on my brush, I'm just going to add it there. Um, okay, and so my brush. I'm going to I'm going to do this side with a smaller brush, just because it's so it's such a small area. Um, I'm going to grab this bright blue. I'm going to add it to this area. And then you can come behind and get a different blue with like the lighter blue in it and add some feathers. It's kind of hard to see over here. to see over here but I've made a few 
feathers that I can come behind and I'll just show you right here I can come behind with a black or a darker blue and darken up the underneath spots it'll be better when it's darker or when it's um it'll be better when it's drier but that's kind of the idea and then you can come behind with a even lighter blue and lighten up the edges of it to make it even more obvious that's kind of the idea it's kind of hard to see over here because it's such a small space but let me show you over here um, because we can always we can always fix any um, blue or yellow that comes over so we'll we'll do the blue first and then we'll go to the yellow um, so essentially these are pretty long these are pretty long ones I'm gonna grab some black real fast and I'm just going to um, put in some of these dark parts just on the very bottom. So now when I come in with my color, I'm gonna come in with my medium blue. And my light blue. And remember that these, these are going to be built up. come down with my dark color and blend it into that if I wanted to so now when I come back with a another color I'm gonna focus on this pretty strip right here when I come back with a another one I'm gonna kind of overlap them and you can come back with a darker color to blend in the top You can also put more than one color on your brush if you want to. So now I'm going to come back here and with a darker blue, I'm going to brush down to darken it. So now when I come over with that other, with the brighter color, you'll be able to see it. And you're just going to do that all the way up. I'm mostly taking my bright, my brighter color. And make sure that they're not all in like the same row. Like see how I'm kind of staggering them? Go 
going in with my darker color, brushing down. Go back into my light color now. And I'm really only focusing on this, like the tips of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and darken this area up here. So that I can better see what I'm doing when I get there. I'm just going to darken the edges again like I have been. So you can't see it very well, but what we're going to do next is we're going to go and darken all those places like up in there and that's going to create the depth that we want. I'm actually just going to go in with white here. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to put in some dark. Um, in places. Just kind of stippling that in. And I'm going to go ahead and move to a smaller brush now. I'm going to grab my round brush and I'm going to mix some of this blue with my um, dark blue 
and some of my black and I'm going to mix that together. We're going to do kind of a two part process to adding in our darks. We're going to add in a dark blue first to add um, some depth and then we're going to come in with the black and add in like the actual shadows. Um, so what you're going to need to do is you're going to find where the tips of those are and pull down. And each feather, you're just going to add a little bit of a shadow to each one of those. And already, just look at that, already there's depth in here. And if you want it more blended, you can take another brush and just use the same color and blend it down. So I'm going to go back and forth between these and use my dry brush to blend it down. And you're just going to do that with all of these. And essentially, the more shadow you give one of it, the more it's going to um, make it look like it's um, kind of lifted off of it. If there's less shadow, then it's going to look like the feathers are closer together. So you kind of get to choose. Um, you get to choose what it like how each feather lays. And you can also create new feathers this way too. And I'm just using my finger to kind of like brush it down. I feel like it's kind of easier and quicker. And what I mean by create new ones is like right here, there's kind of a, a lack of them. There's not very many. Um, so what you can do is you can just go in circles and create the shadow, like the absence of them. And that shadow will 
create new ones that you can then detail later. You can also go in with your light colored one and put in other ones that maybe aren't there. All right, I'm gonna finish this part over here. It's a fairly simple process, it just takes a little bit of time. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my, I think my black, and put in some of these like darker pieces going in here.
And this is also the part where you can, um, either with your dark blue or your black, um, you can add in the middle lines. of all your feathers. If you want to do this with a liner brush, you can. It takes quite the process, but I think it's definitely, it's kind of a fun, fun thing to do, kind of getting lost in the process. Um, now I'm going to, um, that's too bright, um, I'm going to go in with like a lighter blue, and just put a little bit on the edges. Just going to add a little bit to the edges, any of them that you kind of like want to stand out a little bit. Put some over here too. I'm gonna go over here and add some of that dark blue that we were putting in over there. Just kind of blend that in a little bit. And all of a sudden we just have so much depth already. Crazy. All right, we do have to keep going because it is like five. I didn't realize what time it was. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in some other dark, some dark parts over here. And here I'm just adding, this is a lot more, um, it's kind of a lot more furrier than the ones over here and they're going to be a lot easier to do so i'm just adding those dark elements in here and i'm just flicking it out like it looks really good from afar but if you look really close you'll see that it's just kind of paint <laughs> If that makes sense like there's no real like detail it's just it's just light and dark that's all it is so 
So once we get some of this dark in here, um, we'll come back with our light. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out this brush. I'll show you, I'm gonna come back in with some lighter blue. And I'm just gonna add this light color over the dark. Kind of in some some lines and specifically I'm paying attention to the outer edge of this And as you get up to the top, there's going to be a lot more white. I think that looks good. I'm going to transition to this part. I'm going to put in those dark areas that I see. And I'm just putting my brush down and flicking up. That's all I'm doing. And there's not a whole lot of dark area. And now I can come back with that bright yellow or the bright green. Put in some of that. I can come in with some just pure yellow. And then I can come in with just pure white. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and finish up these, these, and then we'll finish the dark ones and then we'll be all done. All right, so for these, we're gonna make um, kind of two or three colors of um, yellow. So we have our main yellow, and then we're gonna do a slightly darker yellow. So I'm going to mix, I'm going to mix a tiny bit of brown into this yellow and then it's not going to take a whole lot I almost made it green I'm gonna offset it just a little bit by adding the tiniest bit of red. Just so it's a little bit more golden and not as not as green. Um, 
nice for this looks so good thank you all right um this one's gonna be fun so it's kind of the same idea of just layering that on there um, and then darkening the top part of it so that it stands out um, so um, a little bit I'm just going to get some of this golden color and put a little bit of this on here so I can start off with a little bit of a darker color there's a little bit of a darker color right here I'm just gonna blend this up a little bit and I'm going to get my just my pure yellow and we're gonna see how this works I might need to add some white to it yeah so I'm gonna add just a little bit of white to it going to add this and then I'm going to grab a different brush and we're going to pull down with our dark color. I'm just going to, I think I want this dark color over the whole thing. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repaint this section, this dark color. So that the light yellow has some darkness behind it. So I'm going to go over parts of this with this I know I'm going to have to do this part twice, so I'm going to do one right here. All right. I'm going to grab just a little bit of water. And I'm just going to every so often put in one of these and I'm just pulling up
little bit of white now. So it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to just go ahead and put on some lighter sections. this over here. And using this other brush, I'm just going to add some highlights and come in with my dark color. And this is where you can add that low light. And add some depth to it. I'm just kind of stippling in some dark parts where I see where my feathers are. I'm not necessarily looking at the reference anymore because I want to look at what I already have on the canvas. There's some darkness over here. I'm just adding more and more darkness. Much like we did with the blue, I went in with the dark blue and then I went in with the black. I don't have, it's not quite black. It's just like a darker yellow. Um, but I do have, I am putting in a little bit of a darker color. It's more of like a, I added a little bit of brown with it.
right so I think that the I think I'm done with the yellow so now that the yellow is done I'm gonna go ahead and come back here with my white and blue and just put in some of these highlights that are like right here it's practically white Also put in some other lights over here and then we are going to go ahead and put your white on your um, on the edge here And then last but not least, we're gonna add some white highlights to um, up here, the black. Um, the I wanna say black and blue. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't really know what color it is. It's just like a blackish blue color. I'm gonna grab some white and blue, a little bit of blackish brown color, and I'm just going to, I just wanna do like the, the very tips of it. So I'm actually gonna do this with a filbert brush and just flick out and just add some of that detail. And if you ever need to come back in with that dark, you can. So for instance, I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of black. Just come in. I'm gonna get some white and a liner brush. And put in the white line. And these are just details. You can be as detailed as you want or not at all. But we're already we're already this far in, so
Lindsay, you can always watch the replay. Don't feel like you missed it. You might have missed the live, but you didn't miss the class. You can always come back. All right. I'm just adding either streaks, another texture, use your finger, blend it in. Um, you're allowed you're allowed to use your finger. Don't worry. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna take my black and I'm gonna give some depth in here. Because I feel like there's not enough. I think that's it and I think I'm gonna call it thank you so much if you stayed this long I usually don't go over the five minute mark but I just felt like we needed to finish I wasn't gonna leave you guys hanging um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this side here because it is the edge of the canvas and it's the edge of the bird. And you can use this to finish any bottom section you have. I think that is a wrap for me. I'm trying to see if I forgot anything. Oh, there was one last thing. Let's go ahead and add our uh, our light part of the white eye. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white and that's literally all I need. Oh no. All right, if you've ever done this before, it, it's a bummer. Grab a clean brush really quickly get it wet I had blue on my hand and reactivate it and you can wipe it off with your finger make sure your finger is clean And phew, that's close. It's always a, the worst. Literally, the last thing I was doing. <laughs> I get it on there. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry this class took a little bit longer but there was a lot of detail in it i hope you enjoyed it um i can't wait to see your guys's um whether or not you did a lot of detail or not a lot of detail i just wanted to show how you can create realistic um feathers um even if it, it is a simpler process than you might think so thank you so much for joining me and i look forward to our next class next class we are doing a watercolor class so if you've never done watercolor and you would like to learn it's going to be a super easy class we're painting uh pansies um so make sure that you stick around for that next week um, i have supplies all in my 
my Amazon uh, store. So if you need supplies, just head on over there and you can grab those. Um, I think I already posted my Facebook artist community, um, but here it is again. Please share your work. I love seeing your guys' paintings. It really kind of keeps me going. Um, but yeah, we will see you next week for our watercolor class. Bye guys.